Hello everyone, in this lecture we're going to cover the definitions of space, velocity and acceleration. So what are we going to learn today? First, we're talking about the differences between speed and velocity. Then we're going to cover the formulas and definitions of the average speed, instantaneous speed and acceleration. And then we're going through the Torricelli's equation. So what's the difference between speed and velocity? Well, speed is a scalar number, means it has no direction associated with it. And it's, you can think in speed as how fast an object is moving. On the other hand, velocity is a vector, which means you have a direction associated with it and it's the rate at which an object changes its position. Well, let's talk now about the average speed. By definition, average speed is the ratio of the distance traveled to the time of travel. In other words, it's how much time you need to travel a certain space. If you take this equation here and rearrange it, we set the initial time as zero to make things simpler. Uh, and rearranging, we have the space function. So in this case here, the position where you are right now, or the object is right now, equals the initial position of the object plus velocity, the average velocity times the time. How about instantaneous speed? Well, you can think the instantaneous speed as the average speed when the time interval becomes very small, tending to zero. So remember, the average speed equation is almost the same, but in this case, the time here tends to zero, the time interval tends to zero. If you look at your car, the in your speedometer, this equipment shows you exactly this thing here, the instantaneous speed. Now talking about acceleration, acceleration is the ratio between the speed and time variations. If you think again about the speedometer in your car, imagine the acceleration as how fast this pointer goes up and down. If you rearrange this equation here, setting initial time as zero again, we reach the speed function, which is the speed you are right now, or the object is right now, equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. This is the speed function for an accelerated motion. But how do we calculate the position or the space for an accelerated motion? Well, if you take a look into this graph here, we know that the space is the variation in velocity divided by the time traveled. So the space is the area below this line here. If you think geometrically, this is a trapezoid. So to calculate this area, you can use this formula here, which is v minus v0 divided by 2 times the variation in time. Of course, we set the initial time as 0 as zero to make things easier. If you remember the speed function and add the velocity here into the equation number 1, we have this. Rearranging it a little bit, we get to the space function for an accelerated motion. See, that's very similar to the other space function we've seen, but in this case here, we are adding this acceleration term. If you notice, all these functions we've seen until now, they depend on time. But what, what if you don't know the time? What if you don't know the measurement of time? What if something is going to happen? You're trying to predict something. So we don't have the time 
variable. So what do we do? The solution comes with the Torricelli's equation. If you take the space function and the speed function, isolating the time here, and again, insert equation number two into equation number one, you reach this thing here. Rearranging it a little bit, and then we reach the Torricelli's equation. If you pay attention, this equation does not depend on the time variable, and it's very, very useful. Now let's practice a little bit with this example problem solution. Well, imagine a hot air balloon rising with a constant speed of 20 meters per second. When it reaches 60 meters high, one of its sandbags is released. Despising the air resistance and adopting the direct acceleration as 9.8 meters per second square, let's determine some things here. Letter A the maximum height the sandbag will reach, the time needed for the sandbag to reach the maximum height, the time needed for the sandbag to touch the ground, and the speed it touches the ground. <clears throat> so let's go through the solution of this problem. For letter A, the maximum height the sandbag will reach, we know that the initial position is 60 meters, the initial velocity is 20 meters per second, and we have the gravity acceleration. We also know that when something reaches its maximum height, the velocity equals zero. If you notice here, uh, we don't have any time information. So when we don't have any time information, we can use the Torricelli's equation. If you insert the values here, we can then discover this additional space that the sandbag will travel up because of the inertia. That is 20.4 meters. But S0, the initial position is 60. So the, the total height reached by the sandbag is 60 plus 20.4 which is 80.4 meters. For the letter B, the time needed for the sandbag to reach the maximum height, you can use the speed function. In this case here, it's pretty easy. We want to discover this time here. If you add V1 as 0, V0 as 20, the initial velocity, then the gravity acceleration, we can discover the time. And the time needed for the sandbag to touch the ground, we know that when it touches the ground, the position is zero, is the ground. Using the space function for an accelerated motion, we have all the information here except the time. The final position is zero, the initial position 60, initial velocity 20, and then the acceleration. If you solve this equation here, you reach two results, t equals negative 2 and t equals 6. Of course, we're dealing with time, so we don't have any negative time. Therefore, the real solution is t equals 6 seconds. And for letter D, the speed it touches the ground, we can again use the speed function for V2. And then we know, adding the values here, that V2 equals negative 40 meters per second. The negative sign here, it shows that the sandbag is going down, the opposite direction it was going before. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Now that you understand the basics, we can move on to more advanced topics. Like this video and I'll see you in the next one.